We've talked about tillage. Let's talk about earthworms. Would you, would you like to talk about earthworms? <laughs> when my kid, I have uh, four kids, three boys and one girl. Um, one, of, one of my boy is a, a pretty amazing boy. And when he was in grade um, eight, um, the uh, teachers would ask the, the, the student, what are your parents doing? And uh, they were seeing what their parents were doing. And when it came to me, um, my boy said, well, my mother is a earthworm specialist. <laughs> <laughs> and the night I got a call from the uh, uh, psychologist of the school, <laughs> <laughs> and he wanted to have session with my son because my son was dreaming all the time and he was getting out of reality because no one could earn his life talking about earthworms. He's now a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is, the way, is in the way you look. Everything is always in the way you look. What do you see? Residue. Yeah. Good. Lots of residue. As I was saying to you, uh, when we started working with no-till and uh, soil conservation, we thought uh, in that two-way uh, dimension that we were looking. Soil was getting uh, away by water or by wind. We had to make, put a cover on top of it, and that will solve everything, right? Very good engineer. And so what we saw at, after a while is that the residue were piling up everywhere. And as a good engineer, we said, well, this is the water. Water is flowing, and it's moving the residue. But then we had that little problem over here. You see the corn leaves getting into the soil? You've seen that, right? And then we see these little pile, and we looked at it a little closer, and we find out that almost before we even harvested the, uh, the corn, we had eight to 10 inches of leaf that was already eaten in the soil. Some producer told me that it's, isn't, it, it might be dangerous. And I told him, no, the leaf, the, the worms take the leaf in, that will hold your plant stronger in the air. <laughs> one leaf on the one side, one leaf on the other side. And so we see the same thing also in uh, soybean. And if I draw here, I drew a uh, 10 foot square quadrant here. And we can see that there's 12 middens per 10 foot square. How many middens does it make per acre? See, if you were in that French system that you don't like. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be easy. That'll be 12 times 10,000. That's fine. But you've got to calculate right now, because I didn't do it, 12 times 43, 5, 60 feet. Is that it? Yeah. So how much does it give you? <laughs> no one took a calculator <laughs> out. It's, just, it's not true. She calculated it. We're going to wait. <laughs> You do that, right? And tomorrow you, you put the number on my Facebook. <laughs> but what we have to remember as well is that this, these minims are made by the anisic hurtworms in the field. They're the ones who are digging uh, vertical tunnels. And for every hurtworms digging vertical tunnels, there's about 25 of, of the two other species. So you've got to multiply that number here, 12, times 43, 560, mm -hmm. times 25. How many worms does it give you per acre? I would say more than one million. So now when I see a field like that. 1.308. 1. 1.308. <laughs> <laughs> 1. <laughs> so when I see a field like that now, I know that there's something going on there that's very, very good. These hurtworms, they're building tunnels, as I was saying. So you can see here that all the residue are in the tunnel here. And they are very, very clean creature because they're not making their excrement in their tunnel. They always go out and they're making the, the excrement in the, uh, at the top here. 
So there's always a little bump here, and this is only earthworm excrement. Very, very, very stable soil. And then you have the residue on top of it. Last spring, the golf club in St. Hyacinth called me because they had a problem with earthworms. They were having these little pile all over the field. And the golfer, when the ball was falling on top of it, it <laughs> would roll down. It was not good for golfers. I told them to say that they had a green golf, a very uh, organic green course. They didn't like me. What do you see now? I'm not having a lot of friends, right? <laughs> wonder why my husband keeps saying with me. Um, what do you see now? You see a midden. You see a hurt one's not very far from there. Um, did you know that Charles, you know Charles Darwin, right? These people here does. <laughs> Over there, Charles Darwin makes a lot of sense. Did you know that the first studies that he made were on hurtworms? When he started his uh, studies about biology and animals and so on, he was working on hurtworms. And the last years of his life, he came back to the earthworms. Where's the head? There's only two choices. <laughs> <laughs> top or bottom? <laughs> Who say at the top? Who say at the bottom? And the other one, no head. <laughs> You think that these little guys don't have any head, right? This is what I have to think now. This is the uh, reproductive um, um, area here. And the short span, this is where the head is. And between here and there, uh, there's uh, over 3,000 species of earthworms. And the only way we can uh, differentiate them is by counting the number of rings here and the way the mouths are made. This is where you find the head. They're blind, they're deaf, they have no teeth, and they have no lungs. They have five to seven heart, and the uh, living organs are there. Five to seven hearts. We have an expression in French that say, uh, that somebody that, ha that is working hard, he ha he's having a good heart. Now, every time we think of somebody that's working hard, hard, talk about earthworms. Here, it's only the digestive tube. So if you cut an earthworm in two, you will have two earthworms. But if you want, if you cut it here, this part is gonna die and this part is gonna live. The only way you're going to have one living part is by cutting after the reproductive rings. If you cut it here, two dead worms. <laughs> uh, they found a blue one. They don't know why. Usually uh, when the animals, birds, they put on colors and so on, it's to please the other sex. But they're deaf and they're blind and they have no teeth, so we don't know why it's blue. <laughs> the biggest one, four meter long. That's 12 foot, 12 feet. And it's about an inch in diameter. And it weighs 2.5 pounds. <laughs> Can you imagine the hook? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, if you have a big hook, it, it needs a big fish. Uh, I was telling you that uh, there are three main families in the uh, earthworms, and the, the first one are the epigeic. They work in the first two inches, and they will deal with the small residue. They will just pick the residue and mix it in the top soil. Uh, they have a very high reproductive rate because they're working in a very, very vulnerable area. 
They live for about one to two years, and of course, they're not sensible to light. The second family is the endogeic one. There's about they, these guys, they just move forward all the time. They never on top of the soil because they're very, very sensible to light. So whenever you see a hurtworm on the soil, it's never an endogeic. <coughs> if you see an endogeic, it's because you're digging your soil, and this is a good way of living, digging your soil to find endogeic hurtworms, and they move forward all the time. So what they're, what they're doing in soil is they're going up, they take the residue here, they're going down, up and down, and up and down, and up and down, all the time, and they're mixing the soil a lot because of doing so. They're eating the soil because they don't have any tea, so they have the, these residue, the soil that they're eating, they're, uh, it's grinding the residue so that the, in the excrement you don't see any residue at all, and they're picking up soil here, and they're having their excrement here, and so they're uh, working a lot the profile. And of course, you have the anisic one, the one that are living in their tunnel all their lives. They're building one tunnel, they're living into to it. And when you're telling me that when you're plowing in the fall and there's a lot of birds eating your earthworms, it's too bad. If they're eating the earthworms, even though they wouldn't be eating them, they would die because they won't have time to rebuild their tunnels. And for every big one, there's 25 to 30 of the, uh, the other families. Once again, when we see that kind of a picture, that tells us a lot. This is an earthworm tunnel. How long does it last in the soil? Over there. I haven't heard you uh, since the beginning. Are you still there? <laughs> How long does the earthworm tunnel last in the soil? <laughs> good, good, good observation. A tunnel, these tunnels here, they will go as deep as 8 to 10 feet. They will go down to the water table or the rocks, whatever it, they, it's first. But um, at that depth, I don't think the, uh, the tillage will break it down. So the part that's not till, how long can it last in the soil? 28 to 30 years. And you remember on the, the previous slides, how long does the uh, anisic lives? Six to eight years. So even after it's dead, the tunnel will stick on. And so it's a very nice place for the roots to grow, for the water to go back and forth. One ton of earthworms per acre will produce 100 tons of excrement, which is about two-thirds of an inch of manure. This will, be, this will mean just about 4,000 uh, 4, feet of six inches drain. And it will produce that amount of nutriment. These numbers you don't have to remember, and it's only num these, these, these number here. You don't have to remember, because there's a lot of study that has been done on the amount of fertilizing or nutrients that we can account for the earthworms in our soil. All the studies are saying the same thing. It is positive and it does give nutrients. They don't agree on the amount of it. But it's just saying that you can count on something. How much earthworms per foot square does it need? I accidentally pushed the buttons and it showed 25. 25 earthworms per foot square will give you a ton of earthworms per acre. Is there any one from the environment here? I always take care of that because um, this is close to one animal unit. <laughs> Um, we've did some uh, hurtworms counting. It, it is a very good time. I always enjoy counting hurtworms. It's probably the, the only time of the year with, where I can be in the full calm, just afraid of the uh, um, 
harvester. And <laughs> worst field, without sand, we had four earthworms per foot square. We even have one field, I wrote 1.1, but uh, it's because uh, my data were per meter square, so it's just one per 10 foot square. And tillage, very aggressive tillage, and continuous corn most of the time. And the best ones we got, we got 25 feet in no-till corn on corn. And as we got into uh, rotation, we can get up to 68, 65 earthworms per foot square. So when we're saying that 25 is one ton, 68 is close to three tons of uh, earthworm per foot square. Residue and earthworms, we calculated that we compare fields uh, with 30% of residue and more after planting compared to bef uh, below 30%. And in sandy soil, we got a 60% increase. In clay soil, we got a 153% increase in earthworm as we left more residue on the soil. Why didn't we get much uh, less in sand? They don't have any lungs. They respire through their skin, and sand is sandy, and it scratches them and they don't like that place. But as soon as we added to that rotation, well, the rotation and the residue, it made a big difference in the sandy soil. We looked at it also. We wanted to know if uh, the earthworms had a very uh, significant impact on the residue uh, uh, eating or disappearance. So we have two uh, boxes here. One has a screen on top at, at the bottom of it, the other one didn't have any, so this is how it looks at uh, the bottom of the one that had the screen, so there was no residue there. So this is how it looks where with the screen. And the next box right next to it, we see already that the uh, middens were made. And what we saw is that without the uh, access to um, the, the, the earthworms where they could get and where they couldn't get, so there was a, always a lot more residue that were eaten or disappeared. This was weight. Uh, it was always the same and with different rotation. So it really showed that the earthworms had an effect on the residue uh, disappearance. And how to enhance the earthworm population? Food. What do they eat? Residue. Where? On top of the soil. When we plow the residue in, the residue are not in the air, in the aerated zone. The earthworms don't like that. They want the food to be on top of the soil. Uh, soil condition, reduced compaction, rotation, and of course a good pH. What I like also to say, uh, and this is one part that is very important to me, is that we said that in the soil we have 95% of the soil that is mineral and water and air, okay? 50% of mineral, about 45% for the water and air space, right? So if I take a soil, 95% of it is this, and then 5% is the organic matter, which account for 85% organic matter and 10% roots, leaving only 5% of the space to the living organism. 5% of the 5% is left for all these microbes that we've been talking about. The earthworms that we see accounts only for 20% of the total biomass that you have in the soil, which means that for every earthworm that you see in your soil, there is four times its weight in microbes, bacteria, fungi that you don't see and that essentially will do the same job as the earthworms will. So in a in full of soil, you'll see up to 50 billion of bacteria. So I can talk to you about bacteria all I want. You'll never see any of it, but you'll see the earthworms. And now you remember that for everyone that you see, there's four times its weight, right? Right. Aren't you surprised? Aren't you amazed? <laughs> doesn't, doesn't it shake you a little? 
these bacteria it represents one to two tons per, ac per acre. The fungi, one to 1.5 tons per acre. And the earthworms, one ton per acre. So if you add all that up, that will make a lot of people living in your soil. What does it do in soil? Well, we see that the earthworms, they have an effect on a lot of char characteristic but it will bring me to the roots part. The roots also have a very, very important effect of the, on the soil. <laughs>